In a previous video, we reviewed the Hasselblad 907X and one of the comments that I made was that it really needed a larger sensor, the 645 sensor like the one that's in the H60-100C. Recently, Hasselblad seems to have addressed this issue by producing this, the uh, XH converter, the 0.8 converter, and what this does is you can put 645 H-mount lenses onto your Hasselblad X1D and effectively minimize or completely negate the crop factor. So this 100mm f2.2 lens will have a similar look on this camera with the adapter as it does with the larger 645 sensor in the H60. So in this video, we're going to test out the adapter with the H-mount lens. We're going to see how it performs. And I'm also going to be comparing the 100mm f2.2 against the 80mm f1.9 because on this camera with the adapter, they should have a similar field of view and produce similar depths of field. So we're in Leeds, pretty much the same spot that we've been in for a while now. Uh, let's take a few shots and uh, see how both of these lenses with the adapter perform. Okay, so let's quickly run through some of the specifications of both lenses and the adapter. So first of all, this 80mm f1.9, designed for a much smaller medium format sensor found in the X1D, whereas the 100mm f2.2 is designed for a much larger sensor that's found in the H60-100C. So even though this is designed for the 645 sensor, what's remarkable, what's remarkable about it is the fact that it's still much smaller and lighter than the 80mm f1.9. So that's re something really quite nice about this lens. However, once you uh, put the adapter on, then uh, this system becomes much larger and heavier than the 80mm f1.9. Although the X1D system overall is still going to be much lighter and smaller than shooting with a H60 type uh, camera system. Now the adapter, the adapt has a crop factor of 0.8. So what this means is that the 100 mil, if you just attach it to the X1D with the standard H-mount adapter, it's gonna be similar to kind of like a 79 mil F1.8 lens on a uh, full frame system. However, because we've also got the 0.8 uh, adapter, it further crops it or further expands it, I should say, to something that would be similar to like a 65 mil or a 63 mil lens with an aperture of f1.4. So this essentially can technically produce shallower depth of field with the adapter, can produce shallower depth of field compared to the 80 mil f1.9 because this would be equivalent to like a 63-ish mil uh, f1.5. So there's a slight difference, but I'm not sure that's going to be very noticeable. Finally, the other major difference between these two lenses is the fact that this has a proper manual focus ring. It's not focused by wire and it's something that I really, really prefer. So for those of you who like using a proper manual focus ring, then this does have it. Whereas the 80mm f1.9, I mean, the focus by wire in the X1D lenses are great anyway. However, it's just not quite the same, especially if you want to like precisely manual focus. I just think that uh, the proper manual focus rings in these uh, DSLR type lenses are just a little bit better. But anyway, I'm gonna take some pictures of Annette now who's currently standing behind the camera and we're gonna test the image quality. We're also gonna be looking at the field of view and the depth of field and so on and just seeing how this system performs. Essentially, we're gonna use this as a benchmark and then compare this 100 mil on the adapter to the 80 mil and see how it performs. Okay, so we've taken a few pictures and looking at the back of the camera, there are some differences that we're seeing immediately. First of all, this is obviously a much older lens. It's gonna have an older design. And because of that, the XCD lens does look better on the back of the camera. It just has better contrast. The colors pop a little bit more. And from the looks of it, it tends to handle flaring a little bit better. So in terms of just image quality on the back of the screen, the XCD lens looks to be quite a bit better. 
Well, however, the 100 mil is no slouch. Image quality is still really, really good. And although it does lack contrast, there is a certain kind of feel to it, which I'm really enjoying. However, we're just looking at the back of the screen at the moment, so that's not really a good indicator of what these images are gonna look like. And it's probably better to look at them on a larger screen and put them side by side. The biggest difference is the way that each lens sounds when we're autofocusing. The XCD lens, practically silent. However, the 100 mil, I don't know if you can hear that. It is loud. I mean, it sounds like a dentist drill. It's just not pleasing to listen to. It's a horrible sounding autofocus, but you know, I can't really give it too much flack because this is an older design in terms of lens. The, um, the autofocus mechanisms in here weren't designed for this kind of system. It was designed for that DSLR camera, DSLR type camera, I should say, the H60 100C or the 50C. So, you know, on that basis, it's not really a major downside. I think people who shoot with these kind of cameras or these kind of lenses don't really mind the sound, but it is still, it is still a horrible sound in my view anyway. Um, but other than that, you know, image quality on this looks really good. It's still got that field of view. So they look very, very similar in terms of the field of view. The depth of field is looking very similar as well, but it's hard to tell again on the back of the screen. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop into Lightroom. We're gonna look at both images side by side, also do some control tests just to see um, how, they, how they perform. And uh, then we can start making some conclusions. So here we have the images opened up in Lightroom now. And uh, the first thing I noticed when I imported all of the files into my computer was how bad the focus accuracy uh, was on the 100 mil with the adapter. Like it's pretty, pretty poor. Even when the camera confirms that focus has been achieved, it really hasn't. And focus accuracy, um, it was about maybe 50%, like half my shots, maybe even, um, maybe less than that were actually in focus. Now the 80 mil does perform a lot better, but then again, the X1D isn't really known for great autofocus, but the 100 mil really did take it to another level of poor performance. Now I'm not gonna dwell on this too much, but I just thought it was important for me to mention. But anyway, we've got the images opened up here, so let's look at the first two and put them side by side, and you can immediately see the difference in contrast and the way that each lens renders the scene. Like the flaring, I mean, the lights, there's a light source coming in from behind a net, so you can see how each lens handles that. You know, the 80mm does a much better job. The contrast, uh, the amount of contrast is significantly better in comparison, and the flaring, the flares are controlled more effectively. The 100mm, pretty poor in that regard, probably doesn't have the same kind of coatings or the optics that the uh, modern lens has, and obviously in these backlit conditions, it's just not doing that well zooming in one to one and you can tell that yes the 100 mil is sharp it's a good lens in that regard but it's not anywhere near as good as the uh, as the 80 mil the 80 mil picks out detail far far more effectively and you can see how even the scarf and everything you know it's picking out detail far more effectively in comparison to the 100 mil even in scenarios where the subject isn't completely backlit, like the light is coming from the side onto Annette's hair over here, um, the contrast difference between both lenses is still pretty significant. Like the 100mm isn't very contrasty, doesn't have that pop to it. Like the 80mm, you know, the subject just kind of pops off the screen. The colors look vibrant and incredible, but uh, the 100mm just doesn't have that. Like there isn't that great deal of separation between all the different hair tones in Annette's hair, whereas with the 80mm you can see all the differences in the color in her hair. The skin tones come out more effectively, the difference in all the all the shades far, far better uh, on the 80mm than it is on the 100mm. The only area where I thought the 100mm did slightly better compared to the uh, 80mm was bokeh. Uh, and this is a very, very minor advantage, but uh, bokeh balls towards the edges of the frame. The 100mm is just a little bit rounder. The 80mm has a bit more of a cat's eye uh, look to the bokeh balls, but that's pretty much it. Other than that, you know, the 80mm is a far superior lens in pretty much every regard. Chromatic aberrations as well, you can see around the bokeh balls. You know, the, the 80 mil controls chromatic aberrations far more effectively as well. So, you know, minor, minor advantage that the 100 mil has over the um, 80 mil. And even in terms of like the look, I don't think the 100 mil has any particular benefit to it when it comes to the look. I mean, on the back of the screen, I was saying that it did have 
quite a nice look to it but now that we're looking at it on a proper calibrated screen i don't really see any major benefits of the 100 mil over the 80 mil lens the thing that I did notice was that when you're shooting portraits with a slight distance, the 100mm loses a lot of detail very quickly. So if you zoom in one to one over here, you can see how much sharper the 80mm is. Like you can actually see the skin texture and the hair and everything. But the 100mm, a lot of that detail is lost. And this is actually in focus because you can see the plane of focus where it is and where it's landed. So you can tell that it's definitely in focus and it's correctly in focus, but the amount that the 100 mil loses in detail is far more in comparison to the uh, to the um, uh, 80 mil. Like it just doesn't pick up any of the fine details, doesn't have any of that texture. And you know, the 100 mil, in all fairness, this is a pretty poor lens when it comes to optics based on modern standards. And once again, I'm I'm being pretty harsh in how I'm critiquing this lens. So, you know, please take that, please take some of the points that I'm making with a huge grain of salt, because this is an old lens and I'm comparing it to a modern Hasselblad lens. Obviously, the modern Hasselblad lens is going to be better. However, even compared to full frame, the 100 mil is pretty poor when it comes to rendering and detail capturing ability. Finally, we have a couple of controlled test shots over here and these have been exaggerated for effect because the 80mm was shot wide open at f1.9 whereas the 100mm was shot at f5.6 which is pretty much its sharpest point and uh, if we zoom in one to one even though the 100mm was shot stopped down it's still significantly softer in comparison to the 80mm wide open. That's how much the gap is between the 80mm, the modern Hasselblad lens, versus the older H-mount lenses. It's a huge gap in performance. The 80mm is an incredible, incredible lens, whereas the 100mm is an old lens and it's just not going to be able to keep up with many of today's lenses. Even in the corner section over here, you know, the uh, 80mm is just going to perform just that tiny bit better. You can see it's just a little bit softer in the corners in comparison to the uh, to the 80 mil, and uh, this is pretty much consistent. I'd say that the only difference is that the 100 mil does clean up when it comes to chromatic aberrations once you've stopped down. Although wide open, it is worse in comparison to the 80 mil. So a wide open, you know, the 80 mil does a great job in minimizing the, the those aberrations, but obviously it's not going to be as good as the uh, as as it is when it's uh, stopped down to f 5.6. But sharpness clarity and detail you can see you know the contrast the detail the amount that it picks up you can see you can, you can actually make out the texture on each of the uh the patches whereas the 100 mil it you know there's no way that it's going to pick up that, that kind of detail so conclusions now in principle i think this is a fantastic move from hasselblad because the 0.8 adapter allows people that own h mount lenses to transition over to the xcd system without much of a compromise you can use your 645 lenses without a crop factor and that i think is fantastic there are some issues with autofocus but people that shoot with these kinds of systems or these lenses i don't think they're concerned about autofocus too much especially because these lenses have a proper manual focus ring having said that I also think this is a bit of an odd move because although it's great for customers that already own HMART lenses, when you're looking at it from a wider perspective and the wider Hasselblad audience, it's a bit of an odd one because considering the huge, huge, ridiculously massive gap in performance between XED lenses and HMART lenses, why would you even bother? H-mount lenses cannot compete against XCD lenses in any way. The XCD lenses from Hasselblad, the latest lenses, are so incredible. They're some of the best lenses on the market. I mean, surely it would make more sense to put your money towards that system than it would to be buying H-mount lenses. They're really not up to par. In fact, let me put it this way. When I first started my YouTube channel, one of the first few videos that I produced was where I reviewed the Hasselblad 860-100C and, and, and the biggest takeaway from that video was the fact that H-mount lenses were pretty poor. I mean, they were so poor, they couldn't even compete against relatively inexpensive, relatively cheap full-frame lenses. 
That's how bad the performance was. So if they can't compete with cheap full frame lenses, there's no way they're going to be up to par there's just no contest when it comes to XCD lenses. And that I think is one of the best things that Hasselblad has done in the last few years. Over the last few years, they've kind of almost stepped away from the eight mount system and they've produced some of the most incredible lenses for their XCD system. Honestly, I, I'm so pleased and so proud of what Hasselblad has achieved in that short period of time, genuinely, genuinely happy. It's amazing what they've done. These XCD lenses are Oh, they're incredible, honestly. So I really think that Hasselblad should start moving away from the H mount system, maybe not discontinue it to a point where they don't support it, continue supporting it for the customers that already own them, but start producing a 645 system with the XCD mount. And the prime option is the CFV. I mean, stop considering the CFV as a niche system, make it prime time, make it the system that has the 645 sensor, start producing larger format lenses with the XCD mount. And I think that would really put them ahead in terms of the competition, both from Fujifilm and phase one. I think it will really put them in a position that kind of makes them the system to consider because that one XCD mount can accommodate lenses all the way from the 1950s and with a 645 sensor it just makes it all the more compatible. I've made this point before, I'm making this point again, I spoke to Hasselblad about this as well and before I even uh, produced this video I did speak to Hasselblad and tell them look you know what my conclusion is already going to be, this is great but a 645 XCD system would be a better option. So overall I think this is good, it's a little bit of a half measure but I'm still pleased to see the Hasselblad have done this because it does bring that 645, current 645 system into the fold. However, I think there's more to be done with um, the XCD system and a 645 sensor with an XCD mount is the next logical step in my view. Anyway, just wanna say thank you so much for watching our video. If you like this video, hit the like button, please subscribe, share this video, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you.